Hello, my beautiful, darling Cancer babies. I hope everybody is safe, happy, healthy, and doing well. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Gina. This is a Cancerian only channel. Cross watchers are welcome. If you would like to check out my other channels, I do have a Virgo and Leo only channel. I have my main channel, Tarot of Light, and then I have Divine Spirit Healing 1111. The links for all of those are in the description box below readings can be vice versa flip it twist it reverse it to whatever way fits you and your situation please be sure to like share comment and subscribe click that notification bell so you know when my readings post and when the winners are announced on this channel on the first of the month i choose ooh, uh two winners for a five question reading hashtag reading to enter to win that and then i choose three winners for a 50 dollar uh prize and all you have to do to enter to win that is post a a positive affirmation in the comment section with a green heart. I just love that this channel is filled with gratitude and positive affirmations. Um, if you are looking to start your own tarot channel or learn how to read tarot, you could check out my tarot tutorial. The link is below. It's about two and a half hours long. If you would like to check out my tarot and oracle decks, I do have Spirit Shield Tarot and Oracle. That is buy one, get one free. And then I have Royal Rose Tarot, which is 20% off. And this one is extremely low in stock. Okay. Um, I'm open for video readings right now. They are 20% off. The link is below, but I will be going live this week to take one to two questions readings okay so guys I posted a um a poll the other day on what you guys wanted to see more of and singles readings came out on top okay so we're gonna do a singles reading tonight um what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at situations you have dealt with in the past, like uh, the type of abuse that you've dealt with. We're going to look on what you need to do to heal that part of yourself, to prepare yourself for the new love coming in. And then we're going to take a look at what's coming towards you and then do cancer and all 12 signs for new love. Okay. All right. So let's take a quick look and see what you've been dealing with in your love life up until now. Tell me about my cancer babies, please, spirit. Tell me about my cancer babies, please, spirit. Okay. Okay. So we've got traumatic events. <laughs> First card out. Okay. Um, cancer, some of the love relationships that you have been in could have potentially cost you loss of money or loss of a job. They could have put you on mental health medications, caused some type of depression or mental or emotional illness, putting a strain on you. So, it, you know, you may have been so dealt with so much trauma in your relationships that it took such a toll that it affected you being able to work. Like literally some of you may have lost jobs over this. Okay. Okay. Some of you have dealt with people that live a double life, okay, um, where maybe they had multiple relationships or they showed you one face and then you came to find out that this person is a whole different individual, okay? Um, this has left you with deep-seated fears, self-hatred. Um, I, I feel like it has left you in a position where you are afraid to even... Um, get close to people, or if you do end up dating someone, you're afraid of even like, like your self-esteem has been so stripped by this particular individual that you're afraid to even, um, how do I want to put it? Stand up for yourself. Okay. You may have been dealing with someone that maybe was married or had a life somewhere else. And you're sitting here putting up boundaries for yourself and defending yourself. And this person made you feel stupid because you're like, what right did I even have? I'm sitting here talking like I'm a girlfriend or a boyfriend or, you know, whatever. Meanwhile, they have a whole relationship elsewhere. Guys, give me one second. Sorry about that. So they may have had a, a whole like, you know, relationship elsewhere where, and it made you feel stupid. Like, man, I must've looked so stupid talking like I was a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Meanwhile, this person didn't even take me seriously. Like they had a whole family or they were uh, some, a, a whole different person behind my back. Okay. Um, you may have been dealing with individuals that were very ungrounded, very flighty, um, where maybe they presented themselves physically, but mentally and emotionally, they were somewhere else. Okay. 
either they were more focused on their career than you, or they were more focused on other people than you, leaving you feeling very like worthless, like your feelings didn't matter, you know, or maybe making you feel like you had to jump through hoops or fight for this person's attention. Okay. Okay. So this could be, okay. You could have been dealing with people that are extremely vain extremely vain or cancer, you could have been dealing with people because I'm seeing booty shots here. So um, I feel like many of you, we live in a day and age where taking care of yourself cosmetically is a big deal, especially with TikToks and all these, you know, social media things. We're dealing with um, women that, you know, a lot of Botox, a lot of cosmetic surgeries. You could have been dealing with someone that was very vain, very shallow. This is someone that likes um, people that are all about their looks, okay? Uh, they want their person to go to the gym. They want their person to be physically fit. They want them to have nice boobs, nice butt, nice lips, nice, you know, a nice beard, nice shoulders, you know, um, this is somebody that you could have been dealing with someone that was extremely vain and shallow, and it may have, you know, robbed you of your self-esteem. This you, you're definitely dealing with people that are stuck with toxic, uh, ties and because they are toxic, they have left you with very low self-esteem. Uh, you've been through a lot of trauma and emotional abuse with these individuals and, for many of you, you were stuck in this toxic cycle where because you got hurt like this once, it just snowballed. The next person that you got with was, it was like the same demon in a different body, you know? So you'll notice that this happened to you at, you, you got caught up with a very bad individual at some point in time, cancer. And for, for some of you, it could have been your very first love when you were like 16 years old, you know, you, you experienced this one time and that was it. After that, every single person that you dated after this individual, it was the same devil in a different body. You kept attracting, um, this type of energy. Do you know why that happens? Because if you do not heal properly and learn the lesson from it, spirit is going to keep bringing it into your life. I can't tell you how many times I've done tarot readings and I hear you guys say, this happened already. Mm, you got to pay attention. You got to pay attention because I could be doing a reading that resonates with what you went through two years ago. And meanwhile, six months down the line, you could meet someone and you're about to hop on that roller coaster all over again. Sometimes tarot readings are a warning to you that you haven't healed from that event in the past and go get your helmet because it's about to come back into your life because spirit needs you to learn the lesson and heal from it. Okay. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. All right. All right. So these are some of the things that you have dealt with in the past. So let's take a look now and see how this has affected you and what you want to work on before new love comes into your life. Okay. Spirit, tell me about my cancer babies, please. Tell me about my cancer babies. I also want to take note that I was looking for this Oracle deck. Okay. And this is the Oracle deck that we're going to use to answer this question. This Oracle deck was right here, right here under my nose. And when I tell you, I just didn't see it. I was looking at every single tray of my Oracle decks in every closet and ev behind every door. I was like, where did this deck go? So Cancer, let that be a sign to you that the answer as to why love isn't coming into your life could quite potentially be right under your nose. It, it might be right there. Um, the answers that you're seeking are right there. You're just refusing to see them. Okay. Spirit, tell me about cancer. What are the things here that cancer needs to heal from? What mindset does cancer need to get out of? Mm -hmm. We're going to, I'm going to do six cards because six is a number of balance. And what we're trying to do is balance you out so that you can, um, find love. Okay. So the first card that we're dealing with here is no good ones. This says there is someone out there for you. Don't let this false belief make you miss out. So cancer, some of you, and honestly, I, I, I got to own this one myself because as a tarot reader, um, 
I, I see and hear so many bad things. And in my own dating life and dating experience, I feel like there's nothing good out there, you know? So I do advise a lot of the people that I do readings for to just stick with the evil that they know. Okay. To stick with the evil that they know. So spirit is saying that we need to get out of this, all of us, myself included. Okay. Um, that, you know, it may be harder to find a good one, but it doesn't mean that they're not out there. Okay. So all of us need to get out of this mentality because I think that we're all so jaded and it's like we get out of a relationship hoping to find something better and then we go from the frying pan into the fire. It seems like, it, it, like I said, we're finding the same demon in a different body and it becomes exhausting. So spirit is saying, nope, there is something good out there. We just need to get out of this mindset. Um, everybody leaves, okay? Choose a partner who can commit to you and let yourself commit to them. So as soon as we meet someone and as soon as we like them, we get into this energy and I'm going to say we, because I feel like all of these cards really do resonate with me too. So I'm throwing myself in the pool with you guys. Okay. Um, everyone leaves. So there's this energy here, cancer of we meet people and we see the red flags. And because we're an intuitive sign, you don't realize that this is what's happening, okay? But you're attracting negative energies. You're attracting toxic people. And you know that this person is not going to be a part of your life. You know that this is not gonna be long-term. So you automatically have this sense that this person is not gonna be a part of my future. I'm gonna fight for it. I'm gonna hope and pray that this person will be a part of my future, but I know internally that they're not going to. And that's because we are all focusing on the wrong type of people. Now, the people that do want to commit to us, the people that do want to love us correctly, we're, we're not viewing that as healthy love. So we push those people away. Too many green flags. It's too much green, you know, too much green. Okay. So what we choose to do is we choose to go towards people that will hurt us and leave us because that feels familiar. So we're stuck in this energy of there's no good people out there and that everyone is going to leave. But that's because we keep not learning our lesson, not understanding that the problem starts with us, that we're viewing love as a toxic energy. We feel comfortable in that toxicity. And that is something that we all need to work on. Okay. Cancer, you may come to find that you don't want to be touched by people. You don't trust touch. Take small steps until you feel comfortable with others. You may have gotten into a fear because... I, I resonate with this. I don't know how many of you resonate with this, but uh, many cancers tend to be demisexual where you have to have an emotional connection with someone in order to sleep with them. So there's an energy here, cancer, of some of you may have forced yourself to have sex sooner than you were comfortable having sex because you wanted to keep someone, or some of you develop such emotional ties when you do have sex with someone that now you're actually fearing sexual intimacy because because you just don't want to get that close to people that are then going to hurt you. Okay. So then we've got too much work here. You tell yourself it's too much work, but it's really an excuse not to get involved. So cancer, many of you in your relationships go above and beyond for your partners. And now you're finding yourself single and life is simple. You know, you clean your house, it stays clean. You make food, you just have to make it for yourself. You know, you only have to run your own errands or worry about your own problems. And when you tend to be in a relationship, it's like you take on the burden of that person's life. And that's a mistake. It's a mistake that I've made too. Let me explain. If you get into a relationship with somebody, okay, and uh, they have a problem with their car insurance, they either, the, it's too high, they raised their car insurance, they can't afford it, or they didn't realize it, but their payment didn't go through, and now they're not insured. What a cancer would normally do is automatically get on the phone and play Captain Save a Ho, okay, and uh, try to, you know, find different rates or do something, whatever. It's not your problem. One thing we need to learn is that we are not our partner's personal assistant. We are not our partner's uh, secretary and we are not our person's parent. We are not their mom and dad. We are their romantic partner. And this man or this woman, if you were not in their life, would come home from work that day, get on the phone and start shopping around for car insurance. They are perfectly capable. Okay. Perfectly capable. 
And the reason why you're seeing relationships as too much work, Cancer, is because in order for you to feel valuable in a connection, you need to feel needed. So what's happening is you go above and beyond to play mom, play dad, uh, play Captain save a because you think that if you make this person's life easier or if you make their life better, then they will value you more. OK, but how would it feel, Cancer, if you were in a relationship and you had someone treating you like a toddler, if you had someone treating you like, you know, uh, like you cannot handle shit? Now, don't get me wrong. There's exceptions to the rule. If you're dealing with. Let's say you're a woman and you're dealing with a man that, you know, is working two jobs to put themselves through school and they're really, their schedule is over and they ask you, hey, babe, you know, I'm working a lot of hours. Do you think you could do this for me, please? If you see that it is really necessary for you to step in because your person is really sacrificing to get somewhere in life and to make shit happen for themselves, that's one thing. But if you have a partner that will be home at 5.15 and, you know, you just jump in to save the day or if they ask you to do it just because they're simply too lazy that's a different story that's a different story and this is why you feel that relationships are too much work because not only do you have to worry about your car insurance but you got to worry and that's not your responsibility when you get into a relationship with someone it is important for you to understand that that person is an adult and and it's not your job to play captain save a hoe it's not your job to make you know i mean yeah you it's your job to make their life easier but if it is warranted. And that is really big. You know, you could have a, a person that's just starting their own business and they're working 14 hours a day. And if they ask you, baby, please, can you help me? Because I'm really have a lot on my plate and you know that they do, that's different. Okay. But if this person is home at 4 30, 5 30, 5 15, and they are capable of doing this for themselves, your job is to say no. I, I got my own insurance. You have to worry about yours. Okay. That need to consistently baby people and it, it, that broken bird syndrome of, oh, let me make your life better. It becomes exhausting. And it's the relationship's not going to last because eventually you're going to get tired of putting out so much. Um, and it, you're going to get exhausted. Okay. It is going to become too hard for you. You believe that it has to be hard, but it doesn't let love flow naturally in your life. You know, you make too much out of relationships because you call in toxic individuals into your life cancer. It is a lot of work on your part because you feel like you have to jump through hoops. You have to take care of your looks. You have to take care of money. You have to take care of the house. You have to take care of the kids. You're putting everything on your plate to show this person, look at what a benefit I am to your life. Look at how much better I can make your life. And in turn, what's going to happen, Cancer, is that you're going to, the, the only outcome that's going to happen here is your view on love is going to start to go down because it sucks because it's you putting out a tremendous amount of work trying to fix their life and you not being yourself. Okay. You not being yourself. You're trying to uh, project this perfect image to your partner on how valuable you are to them. Okay. This is not a job interview. You are not going to work for a company where you're going a little extra above and beyond to show this company uh, that you are a value to the company. Th this is not a job. You know, if you do that in the workplace, the likelihood of you being promoted and being paid extra money and being paid for your time is very high. And if you don't get paid for that time and that extra work that you're putting in, you'll either A, stop doing it or go to a different company that does pay you your worth. But when it comes down to relationships, you can't do this because it's not realistic. You are not the perfect on-call boyfriend, girlfriend that could be there 24-7. You know, you're not being yourself, Cancer. Many of you may like to work, come home, make yourself some dino nuggets, get a glass of wine and curl up on the couch with your Kindle or, you know, Netflix and binge where you don't want to be moving 24 seven. You don't want to be exhausting yourself and cleaning up and treating this person like they're a three-year-old toddler. It's exhausting.
Okay. Um, and then what happens is cancer, you become a victim, you start to feel victimized and you start to change them because you're burnt out. Do you see what I'm saying? You're having anxiety because all of a sudden you, it is in a way cancer, let's just be realistic, a form of love bombing somebody. Okay. It is because you're coming in playing cap to save a hoe for what, six months, a year, and then you're exhausted because this is not who you really are. You need time for yourself. You like quiet. Cancers are homebodies a lot of the time. You like to cuddle. You like to watch TV. You like to Netflix and binge. You not, you like to have that nice big meal at the end of the day in front of your TV, okay? Um, and you're going to burn yourself out. And what's going to happen is you're going to try to change them. You're going to try to be like, listen, I need you to start doing this and I need you to start doing that. And it's going to throw them off because you're switching up the whole relationship on this person because you're having anxiety. You're burnt out you're tired, you're exhausted. So you're bringing to the relationship a level of energy that you cannot maintain. And it's, you know, a lot of times we don't realize that about ourselves. We don't, you know, we start off the connection wanting this person to like us and love us. So we're always on point with how we look and how we handle things and all this other stuff. Let me tell you something, Cancer, I've gotten to a point where I will go on a first date looking just like this, because this is what you're getting. Okay, right here. This is what you're getting. Pajama pants, hoodies, hair up. I don't even know if I brushed my teeth today. I don't, I couldn't even tell you if I brushed my teeth. I know I've had three cups of coffee, but I don't even know if I brushed my teeth yet. So this is what you're getting. And instead, what we do is we go on a first date, we go glue on eyelashes and get the Botox and go get, we spend a thousand dollars just to go on a down a first time date when it, it shouldn't be that way. It should just be like, Hey, why don't we just go for a walk? Why don't we just go for a walk and talk and see if we even like each other before someone has to spend, you have to spend money getting ready and they have to spend money taking you out because they have to pay for the fact that you spent all this money getting ready. Why don't we just narrow it down to simple shit? Let's just throw on some fucking sweatpants and go for a walk and sit down. Let's go on a picnic and just, let's go get some subways and sit down and eat a sandwich and talk and see if we even like each other. Why don't we start doing that instead of the whole craziness, right? Um, so that those are things that we need to focus on before we find love. Okay. Now let's take a look and see what is coming in for you in love. What do we see here for my cancer singles? What do we see here for my cancer singles, please? Okay. So I do see a soulmate coming in for you, cancer. Um, I do feel with mask here, this individual is not going to come in with their heart on their sleeves. Okay. This is somebody that is going to hide the way that they feel. This is someone that doesn't, yeah, see secret crush. Um, this could be a friend that's around you that really likes you. Uh, but hasn't come forward or cancer, you can date this person and they're crushing on you hard. This is someone that has butterflies when they see you, but they may not show it. They may not show that, um, they may not show that they feel this huge soul contract with you. This could be a past life soulmate. This could be a twin flame. We've got unexpected here and divine intervention. Yeah. So I, I feel like you are both going to be blown away when you meet each other. There's going to be strong chemistry. You are about to blow this person out the water because it's like they can't believe the way they feel about you. Okay. Um, this is someone that could be single. They could be a player. This is someone that may have bad addictions. This is someone that is used to ghosting people. This is someone that was not ready for a relationship. They have a bad rap when it comes down to a relationship, but with you cancer, we've got grass is greener healing and spiritual awakening. So cancer, it could be that you're used to this, these type of people. And instead you're meeting someone that is completely different. Someone that's more spiritual, likes the outdoors, someone that's into crystals, someone that's going to help you heal and, and, and help you on your spiritual journey. Or it could be cancer that this is someone that has sat in this energy in the past, but when they meet you, they are starting their own spiritual journey. I feel like with travel and hookup here, cancer, that 
<laughs> this is someone that could be a homebody, okay? But this person loves to travel and they love to have sex in weird places. Like this is someone that will have you join in the Mile High Club. This is someone where if they like to be out in nature and they like to go hiking, expect to be having sex off of a trail somewhere on a tree, okay? Um, this is someone that may like to have sex on the beach. This is someone that likes to maybe have sex in their car. Um, they like to go out. They like to go places. They like to have sex in random things. This this person also loves to stay home and I feel like they also like to go out and have a good time. This is a well-rounded person cancer and a lot of times cancers are like this too um, where we like to go out and drink but not every weekend or we like to go out and be in nature or travel but not every two minutes you know. So there's a sense of you're going to have your time at home. You're going to have your time where you go out and do fun things. You're going to have your time where you go out and drink. Um yeah, I, I feel like Cancer, some of you could be worried that if you make the decision to truly fall for this person, that you're going to regret it. I don't think so. I really don't think so. I, I think that, you know, if you work on the things that we spoke about and you come into this relationship just being yourself, not playing Captain Save Captain Save a Ho, just going towards this person in a very um down to earth energy, that this could be something really big here. Okay. Spirit, tell me about this person. Can we get some initials here for this person or characteristics? Okay. So either you're curvy and they love that, or if you like curvy people, they're going to be curvy. We've got the letter D, first, last, middle, initial. Someone here could be slender and like to wear workout clothes. This person may be very funny, okay? If you're slender and you like to wear workout clothes, you know, even if you don't work out, but if you like to wear like yoga pants and sports bras, they really love that about you. Or guys, if you love that about women or men, women, if you love that in another woman, they, they're going to do that. Someone here is very funny. We've got piercings here. Someone here could have a face piercing, extremely sexy. There's something about this person's hair that's going to be very sexy, or they may find your hair to be extremely sexy. Someone here could have a mohawk and it doesn't have to look like this guys. guys, a lot of time men have like the short mohawks, but they could have like a mohawk type of look, or they could have those earrings that are like big that like stretch out your ear. Um, someone here is slim. We got slender and slim. So one of you guys might be curvy and the other one might be slim. There's something about the eyes. This person may like to look at you directly in the eyes. We've got the letter P first, last middle initial. The letter C, first, last, middle, initial, this really wanted to come out. All right, four more, please, spirit. Someone here could have medium length hair. It could be very curly. And again, I told you this person's going to be very spiritual. Okay, very spiritual. For some of you, this person could have a dad bod or, you know, a mom bod, a very stocky figure, plus size figure. But this person's going to be very affectionate. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and do cancer. Or oh, let me also. All right, I'm going to pull three cards on when you might meet this new love. I had someone tell me that this was bullshit pulling the three cards thing. The only reason why I do that cancer that way is because these are general readings and so many people are watching them that the time frame might not be the same for all of you. So that's why I do that. If I was doing like a personal reading for you and just you, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so I'm going to pull three cards. I'm going to pull three cards, okay? Spirit, tell me about when Cancer might meet this new person. So we've got one, we've got two, and we've got three. Okay, take a minute and just think about it. One, two, or three, okay? One, two, three. Okay, all right. If you chose card number one, it's time to move forward. You might meet this person in July, or you might meet this person when you put the past behind you and you know that it's really time for you to move forward and find love. But I'm feeling strongly July. If you chose card number two, we have there's no more time. This could be an energy of... Um, 
you feel like time is right. You could be meeting this new person in an energy where maybe you guys are traveling or it's like if you don't jump and take, you or this person may feel like if you guys don't jump and say how you feel now, like you're going to lose it. So I don't know, like let's just say you guys meet like at a bar when you're out to dinner and you're getting ready to go. This person may come towards you and, and say, you know, uh, maybe you meet at a wedding or a party or something like that. They may say, you know what, I got to jump in and get Cancer's number now or else I'm never going to see them again. Okay, we're going to clarify these. Okay, and number three is by the end of the year. I'm getting November here. Okay, so if you chose number three, it's going to be by the end of the year. All right, so tell me a little bit more about option number one. It's time to move forward and it's worth the time. Okay, so yeah, if you chose option number one, you're going to feel very strong feelings for this person and I feel like you're going to jump in. I'm feeling between July and September for option number one. Okay. Tell me a little bit more about option number two. We, yeah, there's no more time and waste of your time. So it's an energy here of someone here. Really? You guys like each other. And there's an energy of, if I don't make a move now, this whole thing will have been wasted. This whole thing will have been wasted. So if you're in pile number two, you're going to meet this person in a way where if you or this person don't make a move, it'll be a wasted opportunity. I feel like it's going to be by the summer guys. By this summer, something may be happening in the summer where you're going, you're being invited somewhere. It's like an energy of if someone doesn't make a move, you're never going to see each other again. And I do feel like that move will be taken. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do cancer and all 12 signs for my singles. Tell me about cancer and all 12 signs for my singles. So guys, if you like this type of single reading, let me know in the comments and um, we'll do it again. Okay. Spirit, tell me about cancer and all 12 signs for new love for my singles. Okay. If we're dealing with an Aries, the five of swords, the four of wands, the eight of wands, and the high priestess. So cancer, if you're dealing with an Aries, I feel like um, you and this new person are going to have a lot of communication and a lot of conversation about uh, in the past about the about what you walked away from how people hurt you sabotaged your life you're going to be very quick to tell each other your secrets with the four of wands here this could lead to very high levels of commitment um marriage this could even be a twin flame or a twin soul and i do feel like you guys are going to ascend spiritually in this union if we're dealing with a taurus the king of pentacles the three of swords the eight of pentacles and the seven of swords so cancer if you're dealing with a Taurus, this person knows that you've been cheated on, lied to, and hurt severely. And this is someone that is going to make it a point and put in a tremendous amount of work to show you that they are loyal and stable and that they will never do that to you. If we're dealing with a Gemini, the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Wands, the Hierophant, and the Ace of Cups. So Cancer, if you're dealing with a Gemini, this person may come off as a player. This person could be very good looking. Maybe they're on uh, very hot pictures on social media. Maybe they have a fast car. Maybe they have a motorcycle. This person, you may peg them for a player, but they're not. This person is very passionate about you. They're in love with you and they want marriage. If we're dealing with another Cancer, we've got the Emperor, we've got the Devil, the nine of cups and the sun cancer if you are dealing with another cancer this is someone that they're obsessed with you okay this person is sexually obsessed with you this person may want to get you pregnant quickly i feel like you are this person's sunshine you are their wish fulfillment so that's good if we're dealing with a leo the king of wands the fool card the star card and the two of wands so Cancer, if you're dealing with a Leo, when you meet this person, there could be another option in the picture for them where they're dealing with someone else, or this person could live at a distance where they need to either choose you if they're dealing, if it's a third party situation, or they need to make a decision to travel to come see you or to move towards you, they're going to. With that star card, this person's being divinely led towards you. If we're dealing with a Virgo, the Page of Pentacles, the Ace of Swords, the Five of Wands, and the Seven of Pentacles. So Cancer, if you're meeting a Virgo, this person may be very honest and upfront with you that, you know, they have other options, that they're keeping their options open, or that maybe they just want to be friends with benefits. Um, with the Seven of Pentacles, I feel like this person's going to trigger a lot of your past insecurity. So this may not be a good match for new love. If we're dealing with a Libra, the Page of 
Cups, the Two of Pentacles, the Six of Swords, and the Six of Pentacles. Um, Virgo, excuse me, Cancer, if you're dealing with a Libra, I wouldn't recommend this for new love either. Um, this is someone that talks a good talk, a lot of sweet nothings, but this is someone that has, they're very busy. They have something else in their life, whether it's another person, whether it's their career or a friend group or whatever. Um, this is somebody that isn't going to give you the attention that you deserve. And with that six of swords energy, I feel like you're going to walk away from this to find better. If we're dealing with a Scorpio, we've got the death card, the three of wands, the knight of pentacles and the four of pentacles. This Scorpio is going to be very different than anything you've ever dated in the past. This is someone that you're going to start to see a future with. They're very stable. They show up every day. And this person's going to be, they're going to have that perfect energy of being just possessive enough and, and a little clingy enough to make you feel safe. Okay. If we're dealing with a Sag, we've got the Six of Cups, the Wheel of Fortune, the Chariot, and the Four of Cups. Cancer, I also would not recommend a Sagittarius for new love because you may that this may be a past life soulmate that you a connection that you have with this person, and because you feel such a strong soul tie with them, you may think that they're the one. But with the Four of Cups, you'll end up disappointed. They could be a past life soulmate, but it could be karmic. If we're dealing with a Capricorn, the Three of Pentacles, the Ace of Wands, the Justice card, and the Empress. Cancer, if you're dealing with a Capricorn, this is someone that really wants to build a solid foundation with you. This is someone that is going to want some type of, um, with the Justice card and the Empress, legal ties. Like this is someone that's going to want to get married. This is someone that's going to want to have a child with you. This is someone that may want to buy a house with you where both of your names are on it. This is someone that may want to open a business with you where both there's going to be legal documentation between you and the Capricorn. Okay. Um, and I am seeing marriage or pregnancy for those of you that it applies to. If we're dealing with an Aquarius, the unknown card, the page of swords, the five of pentacles and the 10 of swords. Cancer, if you're dealing with an Aquarius, I wouldn't recommend the Aquarius for new love because this is someone that is either still sprung on someone from their past or someone from their past is still sprung on them. Um, so I would be careful with that because you have like a stalker here. If we're dealing with a Pisces, we've got temperance, we've got the four of swords, we've got the two of cups and the nine of swords. You and the Pisces are both going to be suffering from anxiety, depression, possibly even nightmares. Um, but I think that you guys have a very strong healing energy with the four of swords and temperance, very strong soul tie with the two of cups. You guys are going to heal each other's, uh, wounds. Okay. It's going to be a very healing energy between you and the Pisces. All right, guys, I love you all so much. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you soon. Take care, my darlings.